Awesome. Hey, y'all. I'm Mary Beth from Dread Central. How are you? Hi. Ruby. Hello. I'm so excited to chat. Hell's Paradise is my new obsession. So this is really cool to get to chat with you, with you both. But I guess and that leads to my first question. And I'll start with Marissa, what was your relationship to Hell's Paradise before you came on with this role? Did you have a relationship with it? I I didn't. Oh, my really. door. Did you see my door open by itself? It was my cat. I know. I was like, that I saw that happening and I was like, well, that looks like I have a haunted apartment. It was my it cat. Was <laughs> it was perfect. It was perfect. Um, I saw your face and I was like, oh, <laughs> it's not a ghost. That's so funny. I, anyway. yeah, so I didn't, I didn't really have much of a relationship with it beforehand. I had watched okay. um, the original trailers in Japanese and I remember thinking, wow, that sounds like something that I could voice, but I never in a million years thought it could happen. Um, so getting the email kind of uh, blew my mind and changed my life in the best possible way. Um, and now I am reading the manga. I'm like three quarters of the way through volume five and I'm, yeah, I'm super excited to see how they adapt it. Yeah. And then Alejandro, what about you? Do you also have a furry friend with you? Yeah. I have a, I have a dog on my lap. Sorry. Uh, what was the question? It was, uh, your relationship to Hell's Paradise before you kind of signed on to this role to voice Gabi Maru. Before I signed on with the role, I didn't know anything uh because i've gotten to the point in <laughs> where I, I i'm a fan of a lot of the stuff i watch uh so i don't want to get too attached and then be disappointed if i don't get the thing uh so that's been my new mentality but sometimes it doesn't always work out because i i, <laughs> I read stuff and i and there's no anime yet and i'm like I, i'm praying but with house paradise <laughs> uh my <laughs> our my buddy and fellow castmate, uh, Matt Shipman, he got me into the manga. After I booked it, he was like, hey, have you read the manga? And I was like, no. And I was like, you should read the manga. And then I binge read it. So, yeah. Uh, I binge read it before we started recording episode one. So, okay. So then what are your feelings about it after reading it? Because Marissa, you've kind of talked about it, but Alejandro, what about you? Because it's like body horror and it's a period piece and there's a lot of really interesting things going on emotionally. Like there's so much happening in this. And it reminds me so much of Annihilation, the Alex Garland movie a little bit. And I'm just like curious after Alejandro, you reading it, like what were your thoughts just about what this world is? <laughs> Without spoiling it, at the end of the day, it's a story about love. You know, it, like th through and through, you know, and it's it's so cool because uh, number one i am terrified of horror i am like when oh, it comes really? to body horror like i when it comes to blood i'm squeamish so but it's 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 so gnarly and so cool that i i love it i love it all the the weird creature designs all the you know the the plot itself you know the journey for this elixir of life it's it's so rad um but even through it all through all the battles through all the the blood and all the ridiculous plants growing out of people's eyes uh that th there is a, a nice and genuine true love story under it like it's all about uh this uh murderer with a heart of gold trying to get back to the one he loves i mean he's just a wife guy when it comes down to it whenever i watch this i'm just like he's such a wife guy and it makes me laugh gabi maru is a wife guy through and through even though he's really good at murder he just loves his wife and i love that for him and i love anime with her a killer with the heart of gold exactly <laughs> but this is not the first time the two of you have worked together what's it like reuniting on something quite different from um Porimiya? but yeah what's it like reuniting together <laughs> it's it's so funny and when I found out that Alejandro was going to be Gabi Maru it, there was a kind of like a, a relief and a reassurance because I knew that we had already worked together before we had established this kind of working relationship and now I can call him my friend so getting to record in the booth I know that I can trust what I'm going to perform and I know that I can trust what he will give me in his performance um so it's it's been really fun because these these characters are similar but also very different to Hori and Miyamura so there the, there's some witty banter back and forth but overall their personalities are totally different so it, it's been fun exploring this kind of this, this new uh relationship between characters uh well, I just called it bloody Hori Mia that's that's what I did <laughs> hell yeah well do you do any prep work together like in terms of work like 
Yeah, I'm just, I'm curious. With was, was voice acting, I'm always so curious. Like, is there prep work that the two of you, did you discuss anything together? Especially because Gabi Maru and Sigiri have such a weirdly complicated, cool relationship. So was there any discussions that you guys had with each other before recording anything? No? Hell yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Not really, no. I mean, the most conversation we were cool. like, hey, this, hey, I'm this. Hey. Like, that was pretty much the only conversation. I mean, the most prep work cool. we, uh, from my experience, was uh, recording the trailer, the teaser, uh, with Mike McFarlane, okay. like, settling in the voice. And even then, like, after that, like, when we finished, <laughs> for me, when we finished the first episode, Mike was like, are we happy with that? Are we, like, let's go back through every line. Like, we have, like, a lot of like we had a lot of time so it was like you know what let's go through every single line and see if we're happy with it and i think out of the whole okay. thing there was like one line and it was because of like diction more than anything oh okay but then marissa you had this really awesome tweet about sigiri and like your kind of relationship with sigiri and like be like playing this character and i wanted to hear more from you about kind of digging into her history and kind of her headspace of just wanting to prove herself as a samurai not just as a woman but just as a person and kind of just I let I lost your tweet like right like brain true so I just wanted to hear more about like, your relationship with the character and what it's been like being able to kind of give a voice to her in the show it is, man it is always such an honor to be able to voice a character that I relate to so hard yeah. um and I think a lot of people can relate to her story um so much of her character arc is about subverting um, gender norms or stereotypes. Um, and we've seen it already with Lord Azen, and then we see it with Genji in episode five. Um, and the comment section on Crunchyroll is very funny in that regard. Um, but Ooh. it's, <laughs> man, it's been such a journey because I, so much of what I've experienced in my own life um, is, is kind of related to that as well. So I'm yeah. able to imbue this character with aspects of my own experiences. And maybe not everyone is aware of that, um, but I, yeah. I hope that there's like some subtext or, or something. Um, and to hear that it resonates so much with so many people has been um, incredibly rewarding. And uh, yeah, Sagari is so strong and fiercely independent and yet comes to realize that maybe she does need to rely on others. Um, yeah. She takes us on a whole journey and it's, I'm excited to see where we go from here. Me too. And then Alejandro, similarly with Gabi Maru, what was it like, was there anything preparation wise you did to kind of get into his headspace of, you know, we've talked about him being a wife guy, but also scary and a killer, but there's like a lot going on with him as well, like emotionally. And what was that like for you to kind of get into his headspace and create his character just with your voice? I mean, for the voice itself, it was definitely a collaborative thing between myself and Mike, because we were Mike McFarlane, the voice director. We were trying to figure out where to place it. Uh, originally, my instinct was to like go a little higher for the uh, for the trailer. Okay. But for the trailer, we wanted to match the tone. So we went a little lower. And then in the show, it's like slowly settled because he is young, but he is married. So he does need to have that like weight of experience of like i've killed a lot of people um but it, it, most of my prep work for the entirety of the show is uh reading the manga um cool. and, and keeping up with the show itself for sure and, and i could talk about how this is relatable in my life right now because uh you know he's trying to get back to his wife and i'm married and i'm in the middle of going back and forth between work so i'm always in that headspace of trying to get back to my oh, loved one wow. So uh, I'm just like, oh, and in Horimiya, I was in the similar headspace to Miyamura because of the, uh, I was on the verge of proposing to my partner. So now it's like, oh, how life imitates art, you know, or like art imitates life. Like it's, it's, it's really funny and like happenstance of where, when, and uh, uh, these projects I'm recording are in, you know. <laughs> That's amazing. That's so cool. But then my final question for both of you, starting with Marissa, is what are you most excited for people to see and what's coming up in Hell's Paradise from both what you've seen in the manga and what you might have worked on already that people haven't seen yet? Uh, there are some really incredibly cool fight sequences. Um, I'm excited for people to learn more about the island and about these characters. We're going to get some more backstory, some more flashbacks, and we're, we're going to learn a lot more about who they are and why they became that way. Um, 
And of course, we're going to see more of um, Sagadi, you know, being uh, a badass and uh, incredibly cool. I mean, I'm excited to see the rest of the story brought to life via anime. Uh, a lot of fights, you? a lot of yeah. fights, but uh, and it's just like the mystery of the island, I think, is what's going to intrigue people more than anything. Well, thank you both so much for speaking with me today about Hell's Paradise. Everyone that's streaming on Crunchyroll every Saturday, so please check it out. If you love horror and body horror and gross stuff, please, you will absolutely love it. <laughs>